Hopescope is a cost-effective smartphone fundus documentation adapter. This video describes Hopescope the device and also gives a detailed instruction on its use in fundus photography. Hopescope comes with its own case. It consists of the device, an expander, a slit lamp mount and the 20 diopter lens. The parts of Hope Scope are the optical tube, the smartphone holder, its 360 degree ball and pivot joint, the elbow joint for vertical alignment, lens hold and the optical tube expander. The smartphone holder has a release button which when pressed firmly releases the arms that hold the phone. There are additional support for the phone which is usually not required. There is a slot for the slit lamp mount also. The slit lamp mount has a pin assembly with two pins meant for the slots at the base of the slit lamp which is usually used for the focusing rod. Pin 1 has a die of 6 mm whereas second pin has a die of 8 mm. As most of the slit lamps have either 6 mm or 8 mm diameter slots for the respective focusing rods. The pin is fixed to the pin assembly and the pin assembly has grooves which guide their correct alignment when fixing to the mount. The other end of the mount has grooves which in turn guide the proper alignment when connecting to the hope scope. There is an optional extender for use with devices requiring the optical tube expander as when the optical tube expander is used the overall length of the optical tube and the device increases. So to adapt that we can use the extender to elongate the mount for the slit lamp. As you are aware, Hopescope, like most fundus imaging devices, works on the principle of monoocular indirect ophthalmoscopy. Thus, it requires a near coaxial illumination of the fundus. This is a very important point to consider when using certain phones. The distance between the center of the phone camera to the center of the flash, as shown in this figure, determines how easily the illumination becomes coaxial. An ideal distance will be 1 cm or less. The device can be used as it is for such a phone. If that distance is more than 1.25 cm but less than 1.5, one has to expand the length of the optical tube by attaching the expander to the optical tube followed by the lens holder to the expander. This lengthens the optical tube thus giving the illumination beam enough distance to travel to reach coaxiality. For phones with that diameter more than 1.5 cm, it is difficult to get a complete fundus picture and the device may not yield good results. The device has not been tested with dual camera phones and the compatibility with such devices need further testing. As discussed earlier, the device comes assembled and ready to use for most phones. For phones having a wider separation of the flash and camera, it is possible to use the expander to increase the length of the optical tube as discussed earlier. There are grooves on both the lens holder and the expander as well as on the optical tube for guiding the correct alignment. This is a video showing how to fix the expander onto the optical tube and then the lens holder is fixed onto the expander to elongate the optical tube. On the holder, there is a release button. When you press that release button firmly, it opens the arms. Then keep the holder in a horizontal position and place the phone in the holder between the arms and press the arms to secure the phone. Make sure that the phone is well secure on the holder. 
with gentle up and down movements, one can vertically center the circular image, as seen in this video. Gross centering can be done using the 360 degree joint as well as the elbow joint of the holder. That is the 360 degree joint and the elbow joint for vertical alignment. An ideal centration would look like this, a centered image almost occupying the full screen. To place the 20 adapter lens into the lens holder, push it all the way back with a firm rotational movement at the end and make sure that the lens is stable. The hoop scope is now ready for use. The 20D can be removed from the lens holder with a gentle side-to-side -side rocking motion. It is recommended to start using the hope scope by mounting it on the slit lamp because it gives a better control and better focus. And using the joystick, it can be aligned like you would align a conventional fundus camera. Setting the slit lamp mount is easy. The first step is to place the pin assembly onto the mount. In case you are using an expander for the optical tube, one needs to use the extender for the slit lamp mount so as to increase the length to compensate the increase in length of the optical tube. And then place the pin assembly. Now the slit lamp mount is fixed to the hope scope. There are grooves guiding the correct alignment. After moving the illumination and focusing columns of the slit lamp, as seen in this video, the correct base pin is placed in the slot. Hope scope can also be used as a handheld device. It can be used with both hands or it can be used with a single handed method. When using both hands, one hand holds the lens holder and the other hand the smartphone holder and the phone. With the thumb, one can touch focus as well as click to capture the image. In the single handed method, the device is held by the holder with one hand only and the thumb of that hand is used to touch focus as well as to click to capture the image. Hopescope comes with its own app for both Android as well as Apple. It's available for free download on Google Play and the App Store. This is the Hopescope Android app. It opens into the database can add new patient and these are mandatory fields without which you can't proceed further so you need to enter the name and MRD number the gender the date of birth is optional so is the hospital name after adding the patient, you can go to the visit. Here one can give a visit specific diagnosis and then go in for the capture. In the capture screen, there's a central circle and a cross. This is to align the central image of the lens so that after the capture, the cropping becomes easy. So it needn't be exactly center, 
but if it is within the circle and closer to the center it's easier to capture a good image which can be processed later once you aligned and the patient is getting ready you can have an option to switch off the flash like this it starts with uh, the image rotated for convenience because the inverted image may be difficult for alignment so but if you want to switch off that you can use that button there there's an exposure control like this and also you can specify which eye you are taking uh, by manually clicking on the right and the left eye respectively once the image is ready to capture you can click on the camera capture button and the image is captured when you click back it goes into the gallery you can select an image to edit or delete this is the edit window in the edit window the main feature is cropping the image using the circle as a guide around the area of the fundus that is important and then cropping the image to apply the mask one can also rotate the images to realign them or flip the images horizontally and vertically It's also an option to add an image specific diagnosis. This is a patient with normal retina that's captured with the Hopescope device and the app. You can see that the image is more or less centered. This is the right eye being image. And as you cross over, change it to the left eye. Get the pupil in view and then go into the pupillary area to get the red glow and the fundus image clearly. And then once you are sure of the focus, capture. You can zoom in if you want to. do touch focusing as is done here when the desired focus is obtained you can click to capture and once you finish the capture you go into the gallery you can choose to delete an image or edit an image the cross is for the delete and the pencil sign is for the edit mode and when you click on that pencil mode it goes into the edit window and as discussed earlier you can crop the image to apply the mask once again you can add an image specific diagnosis and then share the image from the app directly This is another patient, a pseudophagic. 
The intraocular lens and the capsular pacification is seen. Not an easy case to take a picture, but uh, you can see that despite all the difficulties, we are getting a good clear view of the fundus and you can see the epiretal membrane. That's a capture being done. You can also zoom in. Touch focusing is done. This is the iOS app and it has almost the same functionality like the Android app. The image is aligned and centered using the circular guide. The additional features of the iOS app is a manual focusing uh, slider which can help in adjusting the focus as seen here. One can also touch focus if required. There is also a control over the flash intensity so that if the patient feels the flash is too bright, can reduce the flash intensity. And as in the Android, there is also a control for the exposure. You can chain the right and left eye and similar to the Android feature, the image can be rotated for convenience, for easy alignment and the camera button is for the capture. Once you get into the edit menu, it is similar to the Android version where the circle helps you to put the mask on the fundus image. Like in the Android, you can also add an image specific diagnosis. You can share the images through email or through a cross-platform messaging software or an app. can also edit a patient's entry and then update. There's also a facility for searching those images you want in the database. This is the edit window. One can also rotate the images if necessary.